When Nasser lost the Six-Day War of 1967, he lost the Sinai Peninsula to Israel. Nasser's successor, Anwar Sadat, made it a priority to return the Sinai to Egyptian sovereignty. Sadat decided to appeal to the Israeli public with a trip to Jerusalem that led to direct negotiations between Egypt and Israel. With a bilateral agreement in reach, but outstanding issues remaining, U.S. President Jimmy Carter decided to invite Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin and Egyptian President Anwar Sadat to Camp David, a presidential retreat in northern Maryland. The key players in the U.S. negotiating team were President Jimmy Carter, Vice President Walter Mondale, Secretary of State Cyrus Vance, and National Security Advisor Zbigniew Brzezinski. The Israeli negotiating team included Prime Minister Menachem Begin, Foreign Minister Moshe Dayan, Defense Minister Ezer Weitzman, and Attorney General Aaron Barak. The Egyptian negotiating team featured President Anwar Sadat, and Under Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs Osama El Baz, with all other members of the Egyptian delegation playing minimal roles. The trilateral summit was scheduled for September 1978. On September 5th, the delegations arrived at Camp David. From the outset of the talks, the mood was tense. Egyptian and Israeli delegations sat at different tables in the dining hall, highlighting the air of distrust. Only Weizmann was able to break the psychological barrier and interact with his Egyptian counterparts. On September 6th, Sadat provided Carter with a list of extreme Egyptian negotiating positions, which he was sure that Begin would reject. Sadat also gave Carter a list of secret Egyptian fallback positions, trusting Carter to pressure the Israelis on his behalf. After three face-to-face -face meetings proved difficult, Sadat and Begin would not meet again in an official negotiating capacity until the last days of the Camp David negotiations. From this point forward, the U.S. acted as an intermediary, allowing Carter to control the flow of information. September 7th and September 8th featured strenuous negotiations as both sides gave their toughest opening positions. On September 9th, Carter introduced the idea of adding signed letters to any eventual agreement. These letters would state commitments that would be non-binding under international law and would prove helpful to the more controversial aspects of the agreements. On September 10th, the delegations traveled to Gettysburg to reflect on the importance of seeking peace and to break away from the tense atmosphere at Camp David. When the delegations returned in the afternoon, the U.S. presented their compromise proposal. By September 11th, Vance and Dayan began to discuss separating the agreement into two documents, one pertaining to the Sinai Peninsula and the other dealing with more complex issues such as the status of the territories and Palestinian rights. On September 12th, Carter himself drafted the first version of the Camp David Accords. The Accords would undergo 22 versions before an agreement was reached. Carter then had the idea to form a drafting group featuring himself, Vance, and a representative from each side, in this case, Al-Baz and Barak. The drafting group created a formulation that separated the framework into two documents, one focusing on a comprehensive settlement related to the Palestinians, and the other addressing an outline for the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty. As the talks wore on, Sadat's delegation grew increasingly frustrated that their president was willing to compromise on positions related to the Palestinians just for the sake of reacquiring the Sinai. On September 14th, Dayan and Sadat met one-on-one. -on -one. Dayan came out of the meeting predicting that the talks would fail. The Israelis would not budge over moving settlements from the Sinai Peninsula. As a result, Sadat threatened to leave Camp David. On September 15th, only heartfelt persuasion by Carter, as well as Carter's insinuation that Sadat's departure would damage U.S.-Egyptian relations, caused Sadat to stay. Begin agreed to allow the Israeli parliament to decide on the evacuation of the Sinai settlements. On September 16th, a critical disagreement occurred between Carter and Begin over a freeze on settlements in the West Bank. Afterwards, Begin insisted he had agreed to free settlements for three months, while Carter argued that Begin had committed to free settlements for five years. For years after the accords were signed, Carter and Begin disagreed on what was promised about settlements in the West Bank. On the final day of negotiations, the U.S. introduced a new formulation related to Jerusalem, 
which called for the raising of an Arab flag over the Temple Mount and a clause describing East Jerusalem as occupied territory. Now it was the Israeli delegation's turn to threaten to leave. Jerusalem was one of those issues resolved by each side appending a letter with their respective positions. It was that evening around 10.30 p.m. that the Camp David Accords were signed at the White House. After 13 grueling days, the delegations had achieved a genuine breakthrough. The signing of the Accords represented a crowning foreign policy achievement for Carter, and won both Begin and Sadat the Nobel Peace Prize. It would be six long months before the sides signed the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty of 1979, but the Camp David Accords marked a new chapter in Egyptian-Israeli relations. Sadat was able to reacquire the Sinai Peninsula and have all Israeli settlements removed while Begin was able to normalize diplomatic relations with the most populous and powerful Arab country and shift military resources away from Israel's southern border. Palestinian autonomy, agreed upon at Camp David, did not materialize. Neither the Palestinians nor the Jordanians wanted to engage in negotiations with Israel. Israeli settlement building continued in the territories, Egypt was isolated from the Arab world, and Carter was unable to channel his diplomatic success into domestic popularity. After the Egypt-Israel peace treaty was signed, events in Iran, Afghanistan, domestic issues, and the 1980 re-election campaign forced Carter's diminishing attention away from the Middle East peace process.